Okay, everybody, we're going to get started. We have Naveen and Jihan, and they are going to talk about multi-dimension pod auto scale with confidence. So, welcome. Thank you. Uh, can you guys hear me fine? Okay. Okay, so as you guys hear, like my name is Naveen and here is Jihan. So today we are going to talk about like multi-dimensional pod auto scale with confidence. Okay, before we get started, I just want to like get a feel of like uh, any of you guys have used like auto scaling in your environment. Okay, awesome. How many of you guys have used like uh, horizontal pod auto scaling? Okay, cool. Anybody use like vertical pod auto scaling? Oh, nice. Okay. So we'll be talking like uh, beyond the horizontal pod auto scaling and vertical pod auto scaling, which is available open source, and how we can uh, uh, take care of the limitations that we find currently. Okay, so here is like our high-level agenda. So we'll give our introductions. We have like a before state, like before our implementation, and we'll talk about like the three main problem statements that we have. It may be like more problem statement for other teams, but like yeah, this is the three things like which we'll be talking about and how we have solved those problems, and then like we'll open for Q&A, okay? Okay, so myself, I'm staff software engineer at Intuit, so I'm working a part of like a Kubernetes service team, so we take care of like the compute infrastructure, so experience in like working on performance and scale, auto scaling stuff. Jihan. Hi everyone, I'm Jihan, I'm a senior software engineer from Intuit, so my mainly focus on is on Kubernetes and the general distributed system. Good. Uh, just want to give a quick overview of the platform at Intuit. So what we have, so as you can see, like we have multiple products. We have these clusters, namespaces. We have the teams. We have like 6,000 plus developers like who uh, is working on this platform that we use. And we have like complete like end-to-end -end automation service like wherein like any team can like onboard to a microservice like with a click of a button. So they get like uh, the namespace setup, the service will be like ready to be used with a sample service, hello world service. Uh, and we have like these four technologies so that is being uh, available as part of the onboarding. So the reason I'm giving it is like uh, we can like correlate this with like how we are uh, using the auto scaling on top of that one. Uh, so here like uh, very high level basics of auto scaling. So uh, there are three parts that we are uh, discussing uh, about so here which is like horizontal pod auto scaling which is like a single service can have a like minimum set of pods to the max set of pods so that is how we can define uh, in hpa the replica count so we have vertical pod auto scaling wherein like we define like what is the resources you want to give a single pod so what is the resources like what is the memory what is the cpu you want to give and you can scale up and down for the uh, uh, resources and Beneath, like uh, everything, all the parts will be on the node, so it is like node auto scaling, so which is managed by the cluster auto scaler. So in this presentation, we will be mainly talking about uh, the pod auto scaling, and we will not be covering anything on the node auto scaling just for the scope. Okay, so here is like our before state. So as I told, uh, we have like multiple clusters, and every cluster will have the different namespaces, like where the microservices are getting deployed, and every namespace will have the manifest for the deployments, HPA, all the different specs, and this is how the specs will look into the each namespace. So they can have define the rollouts. Uh, so here, like they can define like what is the CPU request, what is the memory request, and uh, the developers like who get the service uh, onboarding. So they will uh, use the min replicas, mac replicas to configure their service. For example, like they're uh, expecting a say 500 TPS load. So for the 500 TPS load, they know that like yeah, it can handle with nine replicas. But if they have like more load, like more than like say uh, 500 instead of like 1000 TPS, so the nine replicas may not be enough. So they have to increase the max replicas and the developer has to do that by himself. So there is like no automation or anything available wherein like uh, the, uh, it can be configured. And the challenge is like uh, the developers are good at Java or any other stuff, but they may not be like very good at like Kubernetes. So they have to like learn to see like what they have to modify and if they modify that, like how it will impact. So there's like no clarity on that one for the developers. So this is the before state. So the, uh, and the next one is like what I mentioned about the challenges. So due to that, so these are the like three main challenges that we see. So as we saw, like we have like 2,500 plus services in production. 
And because developers has to handle that, there is like uh, first uh, critical uh, uh, issue was like per pod resource uh, wastage, which means like developers don't know like what is the right CPU to define, what is the right memory to define, and they give like a lot of resources even if it is not required. So even if the CPU is using like say five less than five percent, they give a very high CPU like say four CPU or eight CPU, which is not required. So that in increases the cost. And two conservative min replicas of HPA. For example, like. Uh, uh, whenever like they get like more TPS, so uh, instead of setting the min replicas to three, they increase the min replicas from three to say five or ten, and they just leave at that setting. So with which like the cost of their service increases, and even if the consumption is not there, the resources are being used because HPA will look into the min replicas and those parts will be allocated already. And one more uh, uh, issue was like high traffic causes incident. So as I mentioned, uh, by default, like the uh, teams will be getting the HPA replicas, wherein they can set like min and max replicas. And the max replicas, if they have configured at 10, which can handle 500 TPS. But in the real production, we don't know, like it may get like more traffic also at some point of time. So when it reaches like more than 500 TPS, the 10 pods which you have already defined is not enough to take care of that much of load. So there should be something like which should like update the replicas uh, automatically. So the team should be getting a pager alert and they have to look into that alert, they have to update. So that cycle, that cycle will take time. So these are the like three high level uh, uh, problem statement that we have. And in this discussion, we will be talking about these three and how we are taking, uh, uh, how we are like addressing these issues. So Jihan, you can give it over you. Sure. So as you can see, this is our proposal. We have a, uh, we design a real-time recommendation based. Uh, we design a, a real-time based recommendation, which is deployed in each clusters, which will help us mitigate the the real-time issue. Like there is a spike in the traffic, there is a due to misconfiguration of the, of the memory that you have an OM issue. So at the long term, we also have a long-term recommendation, which will which will fetch the data from a matrix database based on the historical data. We will give a long-term recommendation for your Called vertical size and the horizontal size, which will help you to reduce the cost and help you set the min HPA min max replicas correctly. Then all of them, once we fetch, once we have this recommendation, they will or we have another centralized engine which will fetch the recommendation to a final aggregation of all the recommendations. Then we will generate the Kubernetes manifest, which will be directly deployed to the live cluster for the application. So for the next slide, we will talk about how the long-term recommendation works. So there are two parts, vertical recommendation and horizontal. Let's talk about the vertical first. So we designed a machine learning engine called pod size recommender, which based on the historical metrics, it will do some data analysis. Then it will generate the CPU memory request limit recommendation for you. So what, what it is doing is, First, it will, based on the seven days, past seven days data, we will collect the TPS matrix, the CPU memory usage matrix. For Java application, we will also fetch the JVM related matrix. Then we will also have the request latency and the error rate matrix. Then what we are doing is we analyze those data based on, we use the CPU, actual CPU usage as our main, main matrix. What we are doing is, based on the seven days CPU usage data, we group the CPU usage into different buckets, let's say 10 buckets. Then each bucket will we compute the desired CPU request, its desired memory request, and what's based on that CPU usage that within that bucket, what's the latency and the error. Then, of course, if you set the CPU usage too small, you will have a very high latency, possibly. We will filter out those buckets which is invalid, which might cause some incident. Then after filter out, the graph will look like this. Different column is a different CPU bucket. Then based on the historical seven days data, you can get the, then we, for each bucket, we also calculate the projected, the simulated cost based on CPU, because CPU, we have the TPS matrix, we have the CPU usage, we also have, we can calculate the the desired number of replicas you need to run, then we can calculate a simulated cost. Then based on the cost, the lowest cost will be the ideal stage, which is finally in the long term, like in the past, in the next few months, what's the long term recommendation for your pod? 
At the same time, of course, you have the current CPU, limit, CPU memory request setting in your current deployment, so that will be the current state. Then based on the ideal and current, we will calculate a target state for you, which will be the next recommendation we will apply to your de deployment at the runtime. So in the next slide, this will be an example about how the PowerSight recommender solves the resource, the resource issue. The left side, this is the re over provision resource. You can see that in this case, based on the historical data, the CPU usage is pretty low. So our ideal state will also pretty low in this blue line. The red line here is the actual CPU request that the customers, they are setting. This is pretty high. Then whatever when the post size recommender runs, it will generate a CPU request, the CPU recommendation, which is in the yellow line. So every time in this case, the result is definitely over provisioned. So whatever we are doing, we are a little bit conservative. We only decrease the 10% of the CPU, CPU based on the current CPU request. Then once this is deployed, the pod maybe it will be fine, there is no incident, we are good. Then gradually every week or every day, or bi-weekly we, we run the pod site recommender, generate a recommendation, apply to the deployment. Then finally, the red line, the yellow line, they converge. And finally, they will reach the ideal state over a couple of months maybe. And on the right side of the picture, this is the under provision resources. So you can see our setting is incorrect and the ideal CPU usage is very high. So at, the, so at this time, we will every time will increase 20% of the CPU as a new CPU request. And gradually, the CPU will, uh, will and the, the, the CPU request and the ideal CPU, they will converge. Then this will be our stable state. This is in the long term how we, every week, how we adjust the CPU and memory request a little bit. And finally, they will go to the ideal state, which saves the cost, and there is no incident. So based on this, this is the vertical recommendation. Then we need to talk, then we have another controller called the replica recommender, which is for horizontal recommendation. So you all know, right? So sometimes the vertical and horizontal, they are hard to use them together, the recommendation, because they conflict with each other if you're using the same metrics. So what we are doing is the replica recommender, it will look at, the, of course, the historical data, but also we use the pod side recommenders, CPU memory recommendation as the input. With the new recommendation, the new vertical recommendation, we still do some data analysis and we will generate a new horizontal recommendation for you, which is the HPA mean max replicas. So what we are doing is, based on the historical data, the data, the HPA have a bunch of, you can specify a bunch of metrics, your custom metrics, external metrics for your HPA. We will, for each kind of HPA scale up, scale down metrics, we will fetch the metrics, the historical data for that metrics. Then we will, based on the past seven days data, what we will do is we will, we will choose a max replica which will make sure they are, it can handle at least 90% or 95% of the, of the peak time, the traffic, the traffic at the peak time. For the mean repl replicas, we want to choose a mean replica that is small so that during the off-peak time, we, it can still handle the off-peak traffic, and, but we, finally we reduce the cost in the long term, right, for the off-peak time. But the mean replica, we also, it, it, will be, it will not be that small so that we, we run a simulated HPS scale up, scale down behavior to make sure with the mean replica setting to when the traffic ramps up quickly, our HPA can actually scale up smoothly from the mean replica to the desired max replica. We still with no, with a reasonable error and a reason, reasonable latency. So that this mean replica is, is safe for the traffic peak, but at the same time, uh, during the most of the case, at the off-peak time, it will save us a lot of money. Okay, so Naveen, I think we'll talk about, this is the previous, what I talked about is the long-term recommendation. So we, Naveen will talk about the real-time recommendation we are doing in the cluster. Okay. So as you guys heard about the long-term recommendations, so long-term recommendation works on a cron job, which is like we, for every microservice, we run it on a daily basis. 
okay it will look into analyze all the data and everything and it will come up with a new recommendation and that new recommendation will be applied to the runtime manifest yaml okay but there is a like 24 hours gap so in that 24 hours anything may happen so there may be out of memory error occurred or there may be a spike in traffic with whatever replicas has been defined so we don't want like any incident to happen at that time frame so we want to make sure like yeah so the application is running smoothly there is no fcis for the service owner so everything should be smooth okay so there are two parts to it one is like as we said like we're talking about like vert uh, vertical and horizontal so horizontal hpa by default always have a static min and max replicas okay so we built so this is like our uh, standard like cluster we have the namespace we have the system wherein like we have like multiple controllers so we have a vpa which is the uh, open source vpa uh, uh, vertical pod auto scaler and we have the hpa so these controllers are in the uh, already uh, deployed in a cluster and now we have created a new component called hpa recommender so what this does is so whenever like you have a max replica of uh, whatever is being defined by the service and it will look into the traffic which is uh, getting so so by default like here it is say nine replicas and th this is the current replica count so whenever the traffic increases the replica count increase and when it is like uh, 90 percent of the max replica the current replica is 90 percent of the max replica so hpa recommender will be watching those hpa metrics so whenever it is 90 percent of the max replica hpa recommender will double from max to 2x if the max is 10 it will make it to 20x 20 the max replica count will be immediately like updated to 20 so when uh, the service is taking the traffic uh, and uh, when it needs like more than 10 pods it will be able to scale up because the hpa recommender like runtime is being updated to 20 replicas so this is how like hpa recommender will be able to update from the max replica count and currently like we're doing only for the max replica we're not doing anything for the min replica so min replica is fine so and any any uh, the, the three problem statement that we mentioned the third problem statement was like uh, the high traffic causing incident so this is how like so we have at least like four to five different incidents that happened due to this one and then like the team came up with this uh, idea of like how we can take care during the runtime and this helped like uh, in resolving like uh, or like not seeing those incidents anymore so this this uh, is solving the uh, uh, incident issue and the other one is like we implemented the vertical pod autoscaler so vertical pod autoscaler as we have like multiple different types of uh, services so our majority of our microservices are based on java and java uh, so whenever like we allocate a memory so it uses the jvm and jvm uh, uh, so the memory is like already like fixed so if you say like say 5 gigs of memory so in the jvm parameters you can say like so 80 percent of the memory so 80 percent of memory is being allocated to the jvm internally how much memory is being used so vpa is not exposed to that one so our, we have enhanced the whatever the open source uh, vertical power autoscaler to take care of consider the JVM metrics and we actually do the scale up and scale down of the runtime pod uh, with the updated uh, vertical pod autoscaler and whenever like say uh, uh, the current like memory defined is say like 4 gig or 2 gig whatever it is and it needs like more memory so vertical pod autoscaler will be able to update the memory to whatever is required and main thing that we are mostly concerned was on the out of memory so whenever it's say out of memory happens so immediately like vpa will uh, identify that one and immediately it will double the memory so that's how like we have addressed like these two issues uh, with the runtime uh, service okay so we cover like both the HPA recommender and and the vertical pod autoscaler. So as we saw, like we have like two parts, which is like long term recommendations and uh, the runtime recommendations. So this will be the overall picture of like how all the dots are being connected. So <clears throat> so this is what our like multi dimensional autoscale engine is. What we say. And the one with Jihan walked through us is the long-term recommendation. So we have like three kind of recommend recommenders. So we have like a, a pod size recommender. We have HPA target metrics in the HPA. We also have the target metrics. We haven't talked about it, but yeah, we have that recommender too. We also have the replica recommender. So it looks for like all of those metrics and uh, publishes to the wavefront dashboard. So that is about the long-term uh, metrics. And here we have the real-time metrics. So all of these real-time metrics are also like being push to our metric server and then like from there our auto scale engine will look into like all of these metrics 
and then come, uh, comes to a solution of like what is the right recommendation resources for your pod and what is the replica count. So what is the uh, size of the pod and what is the count of the pod. So this recommendation will be a simple like YAML for every service and if, as soon as like the recommendation is generated like we push it to the S3 bucket and we have a converter which will convert that uh, simple uh, manifest to the actual Kubernetes uh, runtime manifest. So it uh, so it's it's like pushed to like uh, our like repo. So we have the automation over that one, and we use Argo to like uh, directly like apply those changes to the actual running cluster. So this is like our like end to end flow of like how this has been implemented currently, and uh, yes. Yeah, so here like we have like uh, uh, highlighted, I don't know if you can see the color. So we have like these Intuit components. So uh, the pod says recommended, HPA recommended, replicas recommended. These are all are uh, Intuit components and these are like uh, upstream open source components. Uh, yeah, I think we covered pretty much. Yes, I did, did not uh, talk about the Kafka event. So whenever like any recommendation uh, does, uh, does change, so it will trigger an event. So that event will send to Kafka and that event uh, will also like Call the auto, make the auto scale engine to like uh, reanalyze re all the metrics and then like uh, perform the recommendation at the time, at the same time. Okay. So this is how the recommendation YAML, the simplified recommendation YAML, will look like. So for the vertical size, uh, we have the container which is app. We have this uh, CPU. We have this memory, and we have like container sidecar containers like Istio proxy. That is for the vertical, and this is how we have like for the horizontal. So vertical, we will have like one sizing across all the namespaces. But horizontal, we will have per environment. So we can have a different horizontal size for pre-prod than to the prod. But vertical, it should be the same pod size across like all the environments. So yeah, this is how the YAML, and this is the same YAML like we will uh, convert and push it to make sure like it's the Kubernetes manifests are generated. OK. I think like, yeah, Gian will tell the benefits uh, that we have done. So here is our demo for the actual production service running our Kubernetes cluster. This is the before step. You can see that previously the CPU usage is pretty high. And actually the CPU request is pretty high, but the CPU usage is pretty low. And potentially we have a 70%, at least we have a 70% uh, cost reduction. And after we run our hospital engine, over the few weeks, you can see we are gradually every time this is a resource over provision issue, and gradually we are reduce our recommendation by 10%, 10%, 10%, and gradually you can see in the long term the ideal and the target they will converge to the final state. So currently, if I check this application before meeting, they already they come to this ideal state by this a few hundred CPU times. Okay. So this is a high-level summary of our presentation. So we have upscaling part, and we have two upscaling recommendations. One is the vertical side, vertical scale, and the horizontal scale. For horizontal scale, in the real time, we have a HPA recommender to bump the HPA max traffic that's needed to handle the overall traffic bump. And in the long term, we have a machine learning engine called Replicas Recommender, which will analyze the historical data and come up with the optimized HPA minimax replicas and max replicas. So the vertical scale, in the real time, we deploy VPA in pre prod which it will adjust the application and the sidecar container CPU memory resources at real time only in pre prod And for the long term, we have another machine learning engine called Podsize Recommender, which will again analyze the historical data and generate the CPU memory request for all the containers, even including the cycle containers. Okay. Okay, so that's about our presentation. So open for questions. Okay. Question questions? Not yet, <laughs> yes. So we'll be we're planning to like uh, open source this one. So as of now, like it's built like uh, with internal stuffs and everything. So but we have plans for like open source. 
Yeah, so the vertical pod auto scaler, like some uh, PRs we have created in the upstream, but yeah, we are still planning to like uh, add more PRs. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the talk. Um, the question is if if you have a recommender that can scale up the max replica of an HPA, why just leave the max replica high in the beginning? Like, why put 10 if, like, actually you may need 20? Why not just put 20 or 100? Uh, because you should never reach that in theory. Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Yes. So there, there is a reason for that. So a single cluster is being shared by multiple services. If every service will give like max, 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 such a big number, if so, for example, a single cluster is having like say 20 services deployed, and if every service will give like say 20, 30, 50, 100 uh, pods as a max replica, and so you have to like allocate resources in advance, the cluster capacity planning, so we do the cluster capacity planning, and uh, so uh, even, even like when we allocate like pods to a node, so it allocates only up to like 150 or 180 percent. So it will not allocate like say 200 or 300 percent. Okay. So when you say request and limit, so it gives up to the uh, the 50 or 60 percent of extra. So if we give something like this, like which is like very high numbers, uh, the cluster capacity planning will be in problem. And when like multiple services like scale up, so even if the pods want to scale up, there won't be like any nodes to scale up because like we also have like instance managers and everything. So they have. Uh, predefined like min and max, so those have to be like addressed accordingly. So that is the reason like we say like okay, so do uh, at least like three times your min replicas as a default, and then like based on like your needs like you can update. So our default templates will always be almost like three times. <laughs> <laughs> so the the end goal is to have the recommender apply the recommendation by itself, no human control whatsoever. No human control, yes. It's completely full end-to-end -end automation. So there's like no human, but like there will be like all the logs. So if any service team wants to like uh, watch like what happened, so we have like entry of the logs to see like what change has happened, when a change has happened. So all of those, like if they have to like trace back. Because if you have multiple deployments working together, if one goes crazy and starts scaling, there is a chance all the others will start scaling also. And your capacity planning is totally out of control. Exactly, yes. So that is the reason, like, yeah, so we have this automation. That's a good question. Thank you.